Welcome everybody, I'm John Zadar, this is On Top and Hot, and this is Wednesday, November 29th. Tomorrow being Thursday, I've got a live streaming event. I do this every Thursday, 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Me and my co-host, we go on live for about an hour or so, talking to other investors about stocks they're interested in. So if I haven't been covering the stocks that you want me to, this will give you a chance to give it to me. Just drop it in the comment box. I'll go over the information. My co-host, I think it'll be Taylor this week, will cover the charts and we'll give you our opinion on it. Now, if you really want your stock covered, I've only got so much time and I can only cover so many stocks. So get your ticker in there early. I put up a placeholder for the video early. It's up there between 12 and 2 in the afternoon. You can drop your ticker in. Even if you're not there at the show, I'm going to cover it. First come, first served. And getting it in early gives me more time to look at it. That's 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Now, what I like to do on this show is share hot penny stocks with you. I trade penny stocks all through the day, and I'm looking for stocks under 5 bucks on any market that have potential to make us money, and then share those with you at the end of the day. Well, you've probably noticed that my videos have been getting longer and longer, though I'm still only covering three stocks. Anytime I add any extra commentary or extra knowledge I think may be useful, it's just making these videos longer. And we're up to like 45 minutes now. And that ain't cutting it on YouTube. That's just too long, right? So I've got to work this out. I've got to get these videos down somehow, but I don't want to cheat you on information. So what I'm going to try here today is we're going to dive into two stocks, but I'm going to share some hot penny stock candidates with you. You know how I look for my hot penny stocks. I look at the charts. I'm looking for heat coming into those charts. When I find a chart that has heat, I match it up to a hot piece of news. That is a candidate. And I'm going to share some of those with you right now. So we're over here at my free trading platform, Thinkorswim, where I do most of my research and due diligence looking for hot penny stocks. I really don't look through the news because that takes too long to go through, and I've got to make a lot of judgment calls. So I like to come over here and look at charts. The heat just jumps out at me. What I'll do is bring up a penny stock scan. I've got one here for 001 to three bucks, and I will just bring up my four hour chart and just scan the charts. I can look at these very quickly, folks just at a glance right there. I see one just that quick. You can see right over here something's going on. She had a nice jump, broke through the 200, came down and bounced off of it, testing it, and now she's running. Technicals are going to the moon. This looks very hot to me, but I don't have any idea what's going on. So now I'm going to take that ticker and I'm going to go see if I can find some hot news or a filing. This is BGLC, BioNexus Gene, not the one I was going to share with you. And you can see how quickly you can glance at these. You're looking at the technicals. You're looking at the volume. That one don't look bad. C-O-C-H-W, Envoy Medical. There's another one, F-P-W-M, Charlestown Premium. You see how quickly you can find stocks that have heat at just a glance. What, we just had four of them here in less than a minute. This is C-O-C-H. We just saw its warrant. Its warrant was running and the stock is running, has had strong volume over the last two days and is climbing fast and all of our technicals are hot and going to the moon. I don't know anything about her. It needs some due diligence. Well, I have got four stocks here that I've already qualified. These have hot charts and catalysts. Now, when I say catalysts, I don't mean it's a big, hot, blazing catalyst. Think of the hot charts as a campfire. And a catalyst is a piece of wood. How much wood, how big does it have to be to make that fire get bigger? It doesn't have to be a big catalyst, a big catalyst, a little catalyst, a fresh catalyst, an old one. As long as you've got more fuel to throw on that fire, chances are it's going to run. That's why it's running anyways. So the four I've got for us here, we have RSPI. This has run 115% today. She did 108 million shares in volume. Now, RSPI, what was her? Oh, she just had a deal come up. I'm going to throw the news down there at the bottom because I haven't done any due diligence. All I know is what I see in the headlines, and this company has just made a deal. So we're looking at an atypical breakout chart, but it doesn't look like it in this form. She's coming downhill, the price is up underneath the 200, and you can see she is breaking out right now. She worked her way up to that 200, beat her head on it a few times, 
staying on our nine day SMA. And then yesterday she took off. She was down there at 001 and today she hit 0038. 380% run on this stock in two days. And look at that volume. It is growing strong. Look at our oscillators. Every single one is going to the moon or on fire. Let's just take a quick glance at that five day, five minute. All right, I've used a Fibonacci here because this is real important to me. When you have a big strong run or a big bad drop, I like to find the middle. You grab your Fibonacci and you poke the extremes of your run or drop and you end up with these algorithmic supports and resistances that you can trade on. They are legitimate even though they're not attached to any historical price points. What I'm particularly looking for is the middle. When you have a strong run and she starts to come down, you don't want to see it come below the halfway point. The 50% mark. Below it is the negative zone. Above it is the positive zone. If the price stays on or above the 50% mark, chances are it's going to start climbing again. If it falls underneath the 50%, chances are it's going to fall down to the next strongest SMA or worse yet. This one ran, came down, hit that halfway point, came underneath it, but she's hanging on like a monkey. The magnet effect, that's okay. Came back up, came down and slammed not only to 50%, resistance support, but also the 50 day SMA got a good bounce out of that. She actually went over the next two resistances, this one and this one, then fell back and landed on the one underneath. Ta-da! We've got a jump up to the next level. And that's what we're looking for here. This is looking good. Next one we're going to take a look at is WHLR 40% gainer moved 90 million shares today. Jumping back to that four hour, six month view, you can see we've got ourselves an atypical breakout chart. That's what I call it. When you've got the 200 day SMA coming down fast and furious, the price deep underneath it, then they start to get close and you see the price coming to the 200, getting ready to break through it and break out. That's exactly what we got here. Lots of volume for the last five days, pushing towards that 200, nice even climb. All of the oscillators are looking very, very strong. Now this is running on what I would think of as a dark catalyst. Wheeler has some shares that they have to redeem December 5th. They've got these preferred shares and every so often they cash them in for regular shares. Well, they don't have enough common shares to cash them in. So they're going to have to give them restricted shares, which is like a post dated check. They can't do anything with those shares until the company makes them authorized. And we don't know when that's going to be. Well, that doesn't sound good to me. But still, she seems to be taking gains. So you may want to watch this stock as well. The next one we're going to look at is NEG, ticker N-E-G-G. -G. Now, NEG has moved uh, about 5.5 million shares today and had 21% gains. And she's got two catalysts, though I don't think of one of them as a catalyst. She just got notified by the NASDAQ that she's been under a dollar for too long and she's been given a deadline. She has until May of next year to get up over a dollar. The other thing she reported is that they are going to be buying back 10 million shares, $10 million worth of shares. Right now we're at $1.39, so it'll probably be closer to 8.5 million shares. But here's the situation. We've got a rocket stock here. She is ripping and rocket stocks are tough to tell when they're going to come down. When are they going to hit a ceiling? I've got a couple resistances here. We're at $1.39. We've got a resistance at $1.51 and another one at $1.63. And she can hit either one of those. The thing here is, is that you don't know when it's going to stop. All you can do is watch the volume. The volume has been very strong. You can see all of our SMAs are pushing up. She is looking very strong. Every oscillator is going to the moon. She doesn't look like she wants to quit. Looking at our five day, five minute, she got on top of that 200, bounced off it a couple of times and launched herself away from the 200 using her 50 day as her backup. She's been bouncing off of that. She has broke through it right now. The biggest break she's had in a long time, you know, over the last two days. And it looks like she's trying to come back up right now. Technicals look a little weak, but I think it is worth a watch. Last one we're going to take a look at is ticker OSA. Ticker OSA, let's go back to four hours. I've got some notes over here. Let me see what I've got on this one. 
All right, she's had 41.5% increase in her revenues year over year. That is an, always a good thing. Jumping back to our four hour, we've got another atypical breakout chart here, folks. And this one is in the midst of the breakout right now. She is bouncing off of this low bubble at 34 cents, crossing all of her SMAs, staying on that nine day, right? She did come under him a little bit here, and then all of a sudden the volume came in today. We got a nice strong spike going through our 200, coming down no lower than where she started from. Our 200 day SMA is almost flat. This looks like it is ready to break out right now, folks. She gained herself about 14% today, and she had just a little over 4 million shares. So there's four stocks for you that I have qualified with hot charts and some sort of catalyst, but you got to do the rest of the due diligence. So let's take a look at a hot OTC stock. This is Artificial Intelligence Technology Solutions, ticker AITX. She came out with news today about her revenues, which she needs. Her revenues hasn't been that great, though she has been doing business, a lot of it. She puts out constant news presses about these robotic units that she's selling, but the revenues just haven't come into the picture. Well, when that news came out today, she launched. What we've got is a hot, atypical breakout chart right now. She finished the day at 0043 with just under 51% gains. She is on the pink tier. She is current. We've only got one of those green ticks we're always looking for. We've got a transfer agent verified. We do not have a verified profile here. Now, it's not a deal breaker that it's not here. It's just reassuring. That's the only validated information you get with pinks. But being that we're day traders, we're normally in and out of these fast enough that these sort of things don't really make a difference. So what is AITX all about? As if you didn't already know, we're going to go into this anyways. AITX is an innovator in the delivery of artificial intelligence based solutions through their next generation robotic product offerings. And they've got lots of them. They've got robots on wheels, robots that look like dogs, robots that are at entrances up on buildings watching you. They tell us here that AI technology improves the simplicity and economics of patrolling and guard services and allows experienced personnel to focus on more strategic tasks. AITX solutions are well suited for use in multiple industries, such as enterprises, government, transportation, critical infrastructure, education, healthcare, everywhere. Security is an issue in the subways, in the hospitals, at car lots, at shopping centers. It is an issue everywhere. And honestly, I think robots and AI could probably do a better job of it than people. I'm not knocking people. I just think that AI and robots have a better awareness. And I think it's going to be big business. I think this company is going to come into some huge money as we're going to see as we go along. So what was the relative volume around this company today? Kaboom! Look at that, folks. It's only... 400% increase, but they're huge numbers. We jumped from about 43 million up to 170 million shares today. That's hot on the OTC. Share structure for AITX. Oh my God, we've got way too many shares here and it's kind of scary. Outstanding share count is 7.7 .7 billion shares. Insiders only own 16 million, which leaves us... <laughs> Over seven and a half billion shares in the float. It's bad enough we've got a really high float here, folks. But what this tells us is that they're probably most likely going to be doing a reverse split as soon as they start getting some success. When this price gets close to a penny, if they've been running, I would presume they're going to come out with the reverse split. It is the scariest thing about AITX. I own this stock, so I am watching it very close. Market cap on the company, we're just at about 22 million. Financials for AITX. Well, they're making money. It just isn't a lot yet, but it is going to build up. Back in 2020, they had $260,000. We've got three zeros here. We've got to add to any of the numbers on any of these charts. 2021, during COVID, didn't slow them down. They kicked up to 360. 2022, coming out of COVID, they started picking up revenues. We're up, what, 350%. Uh, and then we fell back just a little bit at the end of their fiscal year, February 2023, to $1,300. And they got to keep just about half of that for profit. 
looking at the quarterly reports. Well, it looks like they're averaging normally about 350000 a little below, a little above, and they're bringing home profits regularly. Taking a look at that balance sheet. Cash in, cash in the bank. They've got it, $1.5 million. Total assets, $7.4 million. Oh, my God. Wow. Total liabilities, $41 million. I guess robot parts aren't cheap. That brings us stockholder equity of $33, $34 million deficit. I'm not real happy about that. They need to start making some money, and that is about ready to happen here, folks. And I'm going to explain how. Disclosures. What do we got over here? We have got a bunch of 8Ks, and I went through each one of these, and virtually all of them correlate to news because this company is constantly putting out news for every deal. If they sell one robot, a piece of news comes out. If they sell 100 robots, a piece of news comes out. So there's no reason for not being able to keep up with this company. Diving into the company's news, they've got lots of news. Like I said, they bring out a news press every time they sell one unit. So we're not going to go through all the news, but I do want to headline some of it. And then we're going to dive into the most recent piece that came out today that got the stock running. So I am back here to October. Garda World Company places order for multiple devices. Uh, halfway through October, the company reported second quarter revenues of an increase of 44% year over year. Third week of October, the company reports that their subsidiary RAD has released Rupert, an advanced cloud-based device health monitoring tool. I had no clue they were involved with health. Are they moving into another sector outside of security? This is the first time I've ever seen any information like this. I didn't even dive into it and read it yet. I saw it when I was going through the news. So there's an eye opener, something worth doing some research on. Uh, at the end of October, the company successfully deploys 10 devices to the East Coast University. At the beginning of November, the company is preparing to file dozens of patent applications. We like patents. Patents mean you've got something valuable you're trying to protect. You don't want anyone else to use it and make money on it. Then on the 9th of November, the company's subsidiary robotic assistance devices pose to add an additional $100,000 in reoccurring monthly revenue. Monthly. And that last piece of news. Let's dive into this because they give us a lot of information. $3 million per year reoccurring revenue expected from a single client upon full deployment by AITX's subsidiary robotic assistance devices. On November 28th, Artificial Intelligence Technology Solutions provided us with an update regarding a single client's device order and deployment activities. The end user client is a Fortune 50 global leader in transportation, e-commerce, and business services. As of November 28th of this year, this single client has placed orders for a total of 140 devices, and they list them right there. To date, almost 20% of these received orders have been fulfilled, with 125 devices still needing to be deployed. Full deployment is projected to be completed around March of next year. Currently, RAD's factory can produce up to 40. RIO devices per month alongside the required ROSAs. Upon full deployment to the client, the company contracts indicate that over $250,000 in reoccurring monthly revenue, RMR, will be generated and should total over $3 million per year. Now that's how the company really makes their money. Subscriptions. They're selling robots and they're making money selling these robots, but they make their steady money with the subscriptions to the hardware, not the hardware, the software, the AI, all of the programming that has to be used with every single robot and they pay for it monthly. So the more devices they sell, the more monthly subscriptions they're going to have paid to them. And that's going to bring in a lot of money. The quarter ended November 30th, 2023, will have a significant increase in revenue with monthly revenue being fully realized upon deployment and likely by the end of the company's first fiscal quarter of next year, which ends May 31st. So this money is supposed to be coming in quick. We're going to see a quick jump in revenues. 
The RAD sales pipeline continues to flow with additional opportunities from this one client. Based on ongoing conversations, we are anticipating at least an additional 15 RIO 180 units and four more ROSA units. Once we get these orders in and deployed, we can expect another $25,000 or more in repeated monthly revenues added to the sales board. So this is what it's all about. The more units they sell, they know they have to sell a subscription to the program to make that robot work. And they're selling a lot of units. Well, now that money is starting to come in. And they're telling us that one client is going to bring them $3 million in a year. They've got another one that's bringing them an additional hundred, or is it $25,000 every month. So in a quarter, that's another $75,000. And as I said, this company right now, let's take a look at those financials. Let's take a look at those quarterlies. So our last quarter report, we had $386,000. Now we just heard their biggest client's gonna be adding 250,000 a month. Another client's gonna be adding 100,000 a month and that extra order was an additional 25,000 a month. Add all that up, that's $375,000 extra a month a month. This is $386,000 a quarter. So you're talking like $130,000 a month. And now we're talking about tripling that. That is huge, folks. And they expect this money to be coming in the rest of this year and the first quarter of next year. That's going to be a big change. But right now is when we need to be looking at the chart because it is jumping. It is hot. Let's take a look now at ticker AITX. This is a six month, four hour view. We had a serious rip here back in June of 100% run up to about a penny and a half and then a long drawn out fall to our low here on November 21st of 0019. Now we've got a real strong resistance here at 0055 and we've got one right now we're breaking through at 0039 and we are currently at 0043. And as you can see, it is an atypical breakout chart and she is breaking out right now. She was on this downhill trend, setting new lows over and over again, hit this new low bubble and bounced off of it. She's gotten through all of her SMAs. Once she got over this 50, she jumped. She went from 0022 to 0044. That is a 100% run in the last 24 hours. She's pulled back just a smidge to 0043. She is above the 200 with all of that volume coming into the picture looking hot. Our oscillators, every single one of them is pushing to the moon or on fire. You couldn't ask for a better four hour chart. Jumping down to our 20 day one hour view. So you can see she's just sliding down this hill hitting this low bubble, bouncing off of it. Once she got on top of her 50, she jumped hard up onto that 200 and then launched herself, pulling back just a little bit. All green bars on the hourly chart. Now this line right here, I used my Fibonacci. I tagged the bottom and the top of this run and I found the dead center. And I didn't want it to come below that. It didn't. Everything looks good on the one hour chart. Our oscillators are still on fire, still all going to the moon. Our five day, five minute. So there's our low of 0019 under the 200. Once she got on top of the 200, she just tested it a few times and then launched herself. And now she is paying heed to the 50. To heck with the 200, we're way up here with the 50. She's bouncing off of that a couple of times. You can see there, my Fibonacci halfway point. She came all the way up, came down and smacked it. I mean, smacked right on that 50% mark and then took off and went right to her 50 and she's looking like she's ready to climb. Look at this aftermarket. She hit that high at the very end of the day, 0044. Oscillators, they were falling, but they are in recovery right now. That is bouncing up. We've got a crossover on our MACD and our RSI is shot up from 48 up to 62. Even on the short chart, this is looking good. AITX has a few problems, but if you're a day trader and you're looking for a run, this is a stock you need to have on your watch list. AITX, who knows what she's going to do tomorrow? You should, if you've got it on your watch list. We got another hot OTC stock for you. This is Protect Pharmaceutical Corps, ticker PRTT. 
She was running today. She's been running for 10 days. She's been on a climb about 100% so far. She's been coming out with news regularly. She's been making these deals with other companies and she is adding a lot of revenues to her bottom line. Now, the funny thing is she's made two deals that are completely in different spectrums and I really can't tell if she's isolated to one or the other, but I'm going to share both with you. So PRTT, she finished the day at $1.16 with just about 15% gains today. As I said, she's on the pink. She is current and she too has only got that transfer agent verified. We don't have a verified profile over here. Wonder what's up with that. So what does PRTT do? Well, we've got two descriptions here and I'm going to read them both to you. I wasn't sure which one it was. I think it's both. Protect Pharmaceutical Corporation is a full cycle software development and delivery company that produces, releases, and supports digital products for the business to business and business to consumer markets. The company's expertise lies in custom software development and consulting services in business automation, artificial intelligence, machine learning, data science, big data, image recognition, blockchain development, and cloud services. Its domain focuses includes supply chain, logistics, healthcare, finance, real estate, legal, insurance, advertising, blah, blah, blah. Everything. They're involved with it all. Now read this other one with me. PRTT provides services in the field of international road, seaway, airline freight, as well as intermodal transportation freight and adds convenience to your business and strength to your trade with fast, undamaged transportation services. We also provide custom clearance and insurance services, which represent an important process of the supply chain management. So we've got freight delivery and we've got blockchain. And from what I've seen, they're making deals with companies in both sectors. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Double almost double. We went from 22,000 shares up to 41,000 shares. Very low share count for sure. Share structure for PRTT. Outstanding share count is about 57 million. Woo, look at that. Insiders own most of it, about 47, 48 million. That leaves us with a legitimate low float just under 10 million at 9.7 million. Market cap for the company is at 58 million. Financials for Protect. Whoa, their revenues are growing fast and furious. 2019, they had zip. 2020, they come on the board with $5.2 million, just like that. And in 2021, they kick it up 14 to 15 times, up to $78 million. And in 2022, they bumped it again to $93 million. So this company is not having problems generating revenues, and they're getting to keep about half of it as profit. Looking at their quarterly reports, well, a year ago they weren't too good, but looking at this year's, you can see they're doing steady 30 million every quarter and they're getting to keep about 50% of that as profit. Take a look at those balance sheets. Oh, this is looking juicy. Cash and cash equivalents, they got about 10 and a half million in the bank. They got 50 million in short-term investments. 50 million is owed to them. 82 million in inventory. Just in current assets, they've got about 200 million. Add up all their assets together, a total of 357 million. Liabilities, oh yeah, Whew. less. We're at 111 million. Subtract that from the total assets, we are left with positive stockholder equity of 246 million. Now, what does that mean to you? We'll go get the outstanding share count divide it into the stockholder equity, and that'll give you a rough idea what the price of the stock really should be. Taking a look at the disclosures for the company, we got nothing here since 2019. So let's just run on over to that news. So we've got some news here I want to share with you. We're going to dive into three of these and try to figure out exactly what it is this company's doing. The first piece of news is pretty old. This comes out in May of last year. Protect Pharmaceuticals and Atsoft announce further details merger. Well, when I jumped over to their website of Atsoft, this is what you see. Web3 Solutions, NFTs, Internet of Things, iGaming, 
logistics, insurance. So it definitely looks like they are involved in blockchain. No doubt about that. Then they tell us here, the company has acquired a top-notch software development company. There's a shareholder update here and they acquire Boss4 Export. I wanna tag into each one of these real quick. They don't give us a lot of information, so they're gonna be quick. The one that came out June 27th of last year. Protect Pharmaceutical Corporation has acquired 100% of NAI App, a Belarusian developer of corporate software for business digitalization. With eight years of blockchain development experience and a list of long-term clients, NAI App will bring its qualification and management processes to a new level. The company is using time-tested practices in the field of robotics, artificial intelligence, machine learning, and blockchain, creating first-class solutions that meet current business needs. Now we will combine the U.S. market presence with extensive technical expertise. The next piece of news comes out April 10th of this year. The company announces the finalization of the acquisition of Antrax, Capital Dan's, I can't even say that word. With the OTC's filings now complete, the company intends to interview and find an auditor to complete a full audit. The company had revenues of over $90 million in 2022 and expects to see modest growth in 2023 to both revenue and profitability. Now this new company, Antrax Capital, operates a logistics business providing air, sea, and land transportation and customs warehousing and storage for goods in transit. Antarix will provide future updates and details of their operations and expansion goals in future updates with the shareholders. So it looks like they are doing logistics and freight hauling as well as blockchain and, and developing sites. So they've got two complete different sectors that they are working in. Next piece of news came out September 26th of 2023. The company posted the largest quarter revenues in the second quarter of 2023 and their expansion goals and strategies are progressing very nicely. For the six months ended June 30th of this year, they had $62 million in revenue with operating profit of over $18 million. Their expansion plans for the year have been aggressive and their route expansion has included opening new routes, through the Black Sea and also entering South America and many other new places throughout Europe. Now this is going to make sense when we look at the very last piece of news. We are currently undergoing a PCAOB audit and plan to file a Form 10 before the year end to become a SEC reporting company. We want to see that. It is our desire to rename the company and eventually uplist to the higher exchanges. Now, talking about opening those new routes through the Black Sea and entering South America, that comes from this piece of news, their new deal. This came out November 24th. The company is pleased to announce the acquisition of Boss4 Export. Boss4 Export is known for its robust fruit wholesaling operations in Istanbul, currently achieving annual revenues of approximately $28 million. With this acquisition, PRTT's management is optimistic about significantly increasing revenues by leveraging Bosphor's export valuable routes and client base, which extends from South America to Eastern Europe. So all that they're doing, they're trying to merge these two different sectors together. And I'm not exactly sure how they're doing it, but they're bringing in three new companies. They're bringing in extra revenues, $28 million here just with this company. And the chart is moving now. Everything looks good. Everything looks juicy. <laughs> I like that word. Let's go take a look at this juicy chart. Taking a look at Protect Pharmaceuticals, ticker PRTT. That's a six-month, four-hour view. We've got a high in April of $1.31 and a freaky low in August of $0.20. Cents. She dropped from $0.50 cents down to $20 and just came right back up. Now, right now, we are hitting our heads on a strong resistance that's going right across the top here. She's trying to get through that at a $1.16. Now, she's been going sideways with big bounces between $0.50 cents and $0.80, cents, just up and down, up and down for a long time here until September 17th. We had a big spurt of volume, and that was it. 
She broke out through that 200 and she's been climbing ever since, floating on that nine day SMA, doesn't need any support from any of the other SMAs. And every other SMA is crossing the 200 right now. It is looking very strong. All of our oscillators are going to the moon and on fire. That's what I like about these charts. Coming down to that 20 day, one hour view, our low was in this corner, 54 cents, climbed up to that high of $1.16. She got up on top of that 200, took a little dip before she pounced, and she got up on a nine day SMA and she's floating, falling down to her 20 and bouncing, hitting her head on that strong resistance right now, and she is right up against it. All of our SMAs are looking nicely situated. Volume needs to be a little bit stronger, but our oscillators are very strong. Our RSI is just about ready to hit the overbought. We've had a crossover on our MACD pushing up and our PPO is already climbing. Looking at our five day, five minute, beautiful. We are here at 80 cents, climbing up to that $1.16. It has been an uphill trend all the way. We had this crouch and pounce on our 50-day SMA, and it looks the same. She's gotten on top of her nine-day, and she's climbing strong oscillators. Right? Every single chart, she's floating on the nine, and all of our oscillators are pointed up. You really can't ask for anything else except some more volume. I'm liking this company. There's a lot going on with it. It's just not hot, 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 but the chart is showing heat. That's what we're looking at, folks. Charts that have heat and we're matching them up to news. And I do this all day long. Oh my God, I was just looking. <laughs> I tried to keep this uh, video short. Doesn't look like I did it. We're back to a long video. Well, this time at least you got six stocks to consider and you've got some due diligence to do. Remember folks, the more you know, the more you're gonna grow. See ya.